This video will discuss zero inflated models. Zero inflated models and zero inflated data are widely seen in the agriculture and natural resource disciplines. What zero inflated models try to do is to take into account excess zeros in your data. If you might look and remember back to the fishing data set, we had lots of times we went out fishing and didn't catch any fish. And so we had lots of zeros in our data. Now what zero inflated models do is they estimate two equations. They estimate a count model, and then they estimate a model for the excess number of zeros. And so we'll see this in an application but they're kind of using and fitting two separate models when we're fitting zero inflated models. And so just like we have a Poisson and a negative binomial distribution, we can have a model that fits a zero inflated Poisson and a zero inflated negative binomial distribution. And you might remember that that negative binomial also includes an over dispersion parameter. So this is a good example of how we might be able to look at zero inflated models in our data. Well, here's an example going back and looking at the fishing data set. We have the number of fish caught on the x-axis and the number of times we caught each number of fish on the y-axis. And what you can see is there is a tremendous amount of time we went out, didn't catch any fish. And so in that case, that looks like it's the most observations are zero. And so in this case, we can say that our data are zero inflated. And so we could use zero inflated models to take into account these excess zeros. Well, you might think about um, what you know about doing regression is that one thing that we can do is we can transform the data. So if you saw a lot of zeros in your data, couldn't you transform it? You could, uh, but you need to take into account these three things that are listed here. The first thing is that you change the dependent variable. And so no longer does it represent the count of something. It doesn't represent the number of fish, but if you did something like a log transformation, it could represent the logarithm of the number of fish. And remember that if you wanted to transform the data, it needs to do th two things. It needs to improve linearity and improve the homogeneity of variance. And so again, you could look at something like the diagnostic plots in R to ch check for this, but you need to make sure that it does that if you wanted to transform the data. The other thing that you might run into problems with is that transformation may not always uh, be restrained in the sample space. That is to say that if we have positive values, they should remain positive values. And that's an important consideration when we talk about count data. Because remember with count data, we have non-zero, or we could have zeros, but we always have integer values, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to, uh, say, infinity. And so this is a great example of how we might be interested in uh, maybe using a different approach, a different modeling approach, rather than transforming the data. Now we're going to work through this fishing data set to explore some of these Poisson and zero inflated Poisson models. So we're going to fit these uh, to the fishing data set and these two different model types. The dependent variable is the number of fish caught, and the predictor variables are the number of children in the group, whether or not the group camped overnight, and the number of people in the group. So what we're going to do is we're going to fit the Poisson model, and we're going to fit the zero inflated Poisson model, and then we're going to compare the two models with AIC. And so by looking at the AIC values, we'll be able to tell which model we might prefer. And that'll say something about uh, which model we might be interested in using if we wanted to make predictions on how many fish we might catch.